I don't normally make two videos in the same week, but I looked around for a good video that covers these same uh, amendments here, and I couldn't find one that was short enough and good enough, so I'm going to make this one short. No, really, I, I kind of am. So here are the other important amendments besides the first 10. The first 10 were all passed the same time, right? Back in, you know, 1790, 91, depending how you look at it. All these were passed, um, you know, over the 200 years since then, 200 plus years. So, um, yeah, there's, there's a lot more to it than just civil rights, as you know. And don't forget, to pass all of these amendments, the same thing happened. Um, to pass an amendment to the Constitution is not easy. It's supposed to be difficult. A lot of people have to agree and compromise. So two-thirds majority of the House of Representatives and the Senate have to say yes. And then three-fourths of the states also have to say yes. They're state legislatures. So it's a big deal. So to get these passed, a lot of people had to agree that it was a good idea. All right. So going real quick. Um, yes, there was an 11th and 12th. 11th had to do with state, suing states, and then 12th has to be... Uh, had to be how the Electoral College works a little bit. Don't worry about that so much. It really starts getting important on the 13th. This is after the Civil War. Civil War was 1861 to 1865, as you will learn about next year in American history. Um, and afterwards, some changes had to be made, because obviously when the country ripped itself apart, um, things weren't going so well. So all these amendments were passed, as you see, within five years of the end of the war. First one, uh, 13th, abol abolish slavery, said that's it. There will be no involuntary servitude, which is slavery, in the United States anymore. The 14th Amendment, as we have said, is arguably the most important amendment of all. It said many things. One, it talks about citizenship. How if you're born in the U.S., you're a citizen. That counted everybody who had been in slavery. And it still counts people now who are born in the U.S. We talked about how you become a citizen. That is one way. You can also be naturalized, go through that process. That's also mentioned in the 14th Amendment. But the same amendment also says that everybody is guaranteed rights, not only from the national government, but by the state governments. That was kind of a new thing. People argued whether the Constitution applies to state governments. Well, the 14th Amendment said, uh, yes, it does. So states also have to respect all of your rights. And it also guaranteed due process and equal protection under the law for everybody. That will come up repeatedly. It already has come up repeatedly in some of the cases we heard of. The Gideon case. He said, I'm not equally protected because I don't have money to pay for a lawyer. That's not fair. That's part of what the Supreme Court said. Um, the uh, Galt case, the kid was not treated fairly, didn't have equal protection because he was a minor. And the court said, yeah, that's not right. He also gets that too. So the 14th Amendment came, you know, was involved in a lot of these other cases we talked about. Because this person suing said, I'm not being treated equally because, some reason. And the 14th says that right there, look right there on the screen, equal protection under the law for everybody. So the court usually steps in and says, yeah, you're right. Um, so treat them the same as everybody else. Give them their rights. So the 14th has been extremely important through the years. And the 15th Amendment said that, yes, for sure, doesn't matter if you've been in slavery before, um, you have the right to vote. Of course, as we talked about also, that was not done exactly fairly for a long time. It wasn't really till the 1960s where that was really, really enforced everywhere around the country. That's pretty sad. Over 90 years later. But that's how it was sometimes. Justice does not always come quickly. All right, so now we're jumping ahead to the uh, 20th century. 1913, uh, it used to be that the state legislatures voted for the senators, not the people directly. 17th Amendment changed that. Now we vote for senators. 19th Amendment gave women the right to vote. That was a long fight, and it's amazing. Again, it's been 100 years this year. There's supposed to be big celebrations about this, but everything's canceled, so... I don't know. I guess they'll have a big Zoom meeting where, yay, women's suffrage. But it's only been 100 years where women could vote in national elections. Um, and the 20th Amendment, again, it's in our list of standards. I'm not sure why, but I'll just throw it out there. Um, it um, just moved up so the new term for president started earlier. It used to start in March. Now they started in late January. Um, not a huge deal, but it did. By the way, if you're wondering, the 18th and the 20th, and the, I mean, the 18th and the 21st Amendments were kind of interesting. The 18th said that um, alcohol cannot be made or sold in the United States. That caused a lot of organized crime because then criminals started selling it and making it. And it caused um, uh, the mafia to become important in Tampa, actually, in Chicago and other places. And the 21st Amendment said, you know what, forget that. Let's cancel the 18th Amendment. So it's kind of a, all right, let's, let's, let's not go there. So uh, it's kind of, a, kind, of a, kind of a dead end in amendments. 
Moving on. The 22nd Amendment limited the president to two terms. As we said, Franklin Roosevelt was elected four times. It was a tradition only twice, but he uh, he said, well, if the people don't like me, they'll vote me out. And he was elected again during the Great Depression and again during World War II. And after that, though, that's it. So it can only be twice now. 23rd Amendment, the people of Washington, D.C. could not vote for president. And now they can. They didn't have any electoral votes. Now they have three. The 24th Amendment, this is part of making sure everybody can vote. Uh, it banned poll taxes. You want, uh, it used to be to keep some people from voting. Um, you would be told, no, you got to pay this big old tax to vote. Um, now that is illegal. And it was used because some people would have to pay that tax. And some people would not. So you could kind of see who gets to vote. That's not right. And the 24th Amendment banned that. Moving on a little bit more. The 25th Amendment clarified the presidential succession, says, all right, what happens if something happens to the president? It also gives a way for the president is unable to perform duties. Uh, be, uh, yes, I said duty because they are, uh, you know, sick. Something happened to the president that can't do the duty. Then I said it again. Man, that's immature, isn't it? Then the cabinet and the vice president can uh, come together and say, yeah, the president just can't just do the job right now. That has never happened, but it's there in case it's needed. Uh, moving on, 26th Amendment, lowering the, lowered the voting age from 21 to 18. Remember, that was during the Vietnam War, uh, where young men were being drafted, but they could not vote. And that was a bit of an issue, that sign there, old enough to fight, old enough to vote. That was held up at the time, and um, it was changed, so then they could vote. And not surprisingly, the draft ended pretty soon after that. That's not a coincidence. They had the right to vote, and they could vote against people who wanted to continue the draft. And the last one, we talked about this in class. The Equal Rights Amendment is not part of the Constitution yet. It was um, passed, as you see, back in 1971 by the House and the Senate. Um, but it did not get around to three-fourths of the states. And then we talked about this in class, how last November in Virginia, um, some people running in the state legislature said, hey, if you elect us, we will vote for the Equal Rights Amendment because uh, there were, we were one state short of, of three-fourths. It was 37 states. You need 38. So Virginia actually passed it in late January. It kind of got past us doing a word about coronavirus and such. Um, so we didn't talk about this in class, but they did pass it. But now other states are suing, say, ho, ho, hold on now. Yes, our legislature said back in 1972 or three or whatever, yeah, to the Equal Rights Amendment. But now we're going to take that vote back. So I forget Tennessee. I forget a couple other states. South Carolina, I think says no 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 we don't now we don't like it anymore so it doesn't count can we re have a recount so it's a bit of a mess that's what happens it's been you know almost 50 years now that's a long time um to have that hanging out there so um now it's being fought in court uh i don't i think it would have to be re-ratified by states is probably what's going to have to happen uh which means it's probably not going to pass anytime soon you would think banning gender discrimination would just be a you know a quick and easy thing of course that's a bad thing but some people don't like it and um, others say, yeah, but it could cause all kinds of problems of, uh, you know, about this or women's sports team is going to be allowed anymore. Men's sports teams, right? Because anybody gender discrimination. So it could open some cans of worms. Um, that's one argument against it. But we'll see. It's kind of kind of in limbo right now. Anyway, so um, there's your quick overview of those extra amendments or not extra. They're important. They all are. Um, and so go back and do your quizzes. Thank you for listening.